How's it going? It's Ethan here at eTrailer. Today we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Rhino Rack Vortex Aero Roof Rack System on our 2020 Subaru Forester. It's going to be a great option for you. We do have raised rails on our Forester for you to get some larger or longer items up on top of your roof. You have an okay amount of storage in the back, but if you want to get something larger like a roof box, basket, or you want to get some skis and snowboards up there, get them where you need them to go, you're first going to need a roof rack system like this one. So let's check out how it works. This system is going to be working with our 49 inch wide crossbars, which we'll take a closer look at in just a second. They do have a weight capacity of 165 pounds, but your rails and your roof are going to have different weight ratings on your Forester. So make sure you double check what each of those are. Go by the lowest rated component to be safe. But that's the number that we typically, typically see with roof rack systems in this case. So that's going to be plenty for you to get those items up on top. Taking a closer look at our crossbar now, we see that we do have a T-Track channel for you to mount your T-Track accessories. In its place right now is this rubber weather strip. It's a vortex strip, which is how they get their name. It's gonna cut down on wind noise and drag through these little channels. You will have to trim this up to get your T-Track accessories in there though. So keep that in mind. You might wanna pick up an extra strip. On the bottom here, normally there will be a measurement strip that holds this in place as is the case, and you'll see in the install if you choose to watch that portion, that we didn't use it for demonstration because we have to trim that up too, but that'll cut down on most of that whistling and that noise underneath as well. Crossbars have an elliptical shape, so they don't necessarily taper one way or the other, but they will again help create that aerodynamic design, cutting down on that wind noise and the drag as well. On the front here with our end caps, you can see that we do have a plastic lock core on the front. We just turned that with the key provided, but you can upgrade to metal lock cores if you want a little bit of extra security. Taking a quick look at the towers or the feet of our roof rack system, there's not a ton to them. They do have a rubberized pad on the inside, which is gonna protect your rails and provide a nice strong grip. We tighten those up if we take this end cap off with an Allen bolt on the inside, which again, you'll see in the install portion. But overall, there's not a ton to them. They just do a really nice job keeping everything in place. We have our crossbars set up at about 28 inches apart, which we found is a pretty good number for most rooftop accessories. Also, we're just trying to keep in mind that we do have our sunroof here on the top. So we're trying to accommodate that, and in the event that you don't have things loaded up on there all the time, you'll have full visibility out of there. Keeping in mind though that obviously when you start to get things loaded up, you're gonna be covering that anyway, most likely. So you might wanna accommodate different things based on how large they are. If you wanna have hatch excess, if you'd rather see out of your sunroof, but the benefit of this system and these raised rails is that there's a ton of different options as far as where you put them. The bars are made of aluminum with a black powder coat finish, so they're really lightweight, easy to work with, easy to get on there. And with that black powder coat finish, they're gonna be protected against the elements, which is what they're gonna be up in, especially if you use this as a permanent option. So it's nice to know that they're easy to work with and that they're gonna hold up really well. As far as how they install, that process is super straightforward as well. There aren't a ton of moving parts. It's just a matter of being patient, getting measurements to make sure that everything is where you want it to be. But we'll walk you through that process. If you want to, you can check that out right now. To get the install started, we just want to lay everything out, make sure we have it and that we know what it is. So we have the towers for our crossbars. We have the crossbar themselves, 49 inches. We have a key to unlock the end caps. We have our Allen key, you'll have a measurement strip. Ours is already trimmed. Yours is probably gonna be the full thing, which you'll trim up in the video. Recommend getting a tape measure because we will have a couple measurements we'll need to get. And we have our end caps on our crossbars already, but our first step is just gonna be to remove them anyway, which we can do using this key. So we'll just fit it in there, rotate it, and then the end caps will just pop off as long as I have it rotated all the way. Just like that, do the same thing on the other side and then we'll get our towers in. To get the towers fitted in, you're gonna notice this plate here at the top. We're gonna make sure that that fits in right in this channel underneath our crossbar. So just like that, fit it in and slide it roughly into place. Now is when that measurement strip is going to come in handy. In your case, again, you'll trim it up. In our case, just for demonstration purposes, we're just gonna show you how it works. So we measured we found that we want to be just over about 80 centimeters or 80 millimeters rather, sorry. In your case, depending on where you wind up putting your crossbars, because there is 
a little bit of variability with the raised rails, it might be a little different, but around 80 is the benchmark to start at. From there, make sure you get the other tower in, get it to about the same measurement that you got the first one, and now we'll get the crossbar up and in place. We're just going to start with the far side, making sure that we get it on the rail, and then we'll match it up with this side. Measurements look like they're pretty close, so it slides right in. But our next step is going to be using that tape measure that we showed you in first step and measure the overhang on either side just to make sure that everything is in the right place. To do that, we're just going to measure from where the tower sits to the end of our crossbar. In our case, I'm coming in at just about two and three quarter inches of overhang. So I'm going to go to the other side, measure that overhang, and then adjust accordingly. Now that we have our overhang the same on both sides, I'm going to measure my crossbar spread. In this case, I'm going to go from the middle of our back crossbar to the middle of this front one. In this case, I'm looking for about 28 inches, which we found is just a pretty universally good number for most of our rooftop accessories. So sliding that over, trying to not adjust the overhang. So that looks pretty good. Same thing as before, I'm going to go to the other side, find that same number, match those up. Back here on the beginning side now, after tightening down the other side, and I just want to show you this tool. So it has a built-in torque spec. Basically, this handle on the end, once this line is straight when you're turning the bolt, that's how tight you want it to be. So in our case, I think we're about there. So you see it straightened out. That's where we want it to be. And now I'm just going to replace the end caps on both sides, just fit those right in, and tighten that up with the key that we used to get them off in the first place. Once you have all the end caps in place and locked up, make sure everything is tightened down. I just like to give it a quick shake test. As you can see, we're moving the whole car, so everything is on there, it's secure, and you're ready to go. Overall, I think that the Rhino Rack Vortex Aero Roof Rack System is a really nice option. It's super easy to work with. I think overall it looks really nice, and I think it matches the aesthetic of the vehicle really well. With that elliptical design and all those strips that are going to be in place, it's going to cut down on that wind noise and drag, and it gets everything done out of a roof rack system that I would be looking for. The only downside that I think that maybe works against it is the fact that you do have to trim those strips up to get the things in the T-Track channels, which is just kind of annoying. There are some options out there with channels that have rubber strips in them that you just push your T-Track items through, and they sort of accept the T-Track items without having to trim those strips up but we've heard people complaining with those as well, just because after a certain amount of uses, those items that you're storing in those T-Track slots do sort of rub up against that strip and tear them up. So it's kind of here or there, really comes down to preference or whatever you're looking for. But if you are looking for something that's really easy to work with, easy to install and looks nice on your Forester, the Rhino Rack Vortex Aero Roof Rack System is a really nice choice. This again was just a quick look at how to install it, how it looks on our 2020 Subaru Forester.